Well, now we've been able to build molecular orbital diagrams for simple two atom molecules. And now that we've kind of built a, a kind of standard MO diagram to lean on, I'd like to talk about an exception to it. So as we've been talking, to build these MO diagrams, we're making a big assumption. We are combining atomic orbitals to um, approximate what a molecular orbital will be. So again, the true way to learn uh, what a molecular orbital is would be to solve the Schrodinger's wave equation. Uh, however, in the absence of the ability to do that, we'll make some assumptions. And so we're doing a linear combination of atomic orbitals as our method for developing this picture of molecular orbitals. And so one of the things that comes up, because these are for the molecule, right? It's not just what happens with these atomic orbitals, is that we have mixing that occurs between the S and the P type atomic orbitals to create these molecular orbitals. And while we can go into a great deal of depth on this, we're just gonna to touch the surface to highlight something that it changes about the MO diagram, depending on the molecules that are participating in the covalent bond. So what we see is that for elements between on, on the second row, so not the first, but the second. So that's got nitrogen and oxygen and carbon and fluorine. Between lithium and nitrogen, we see that there is SP mixing enough that the two P orbitals, the MO orbitals, so the bonding ones, are lower in energy than the S orbitals that are the bonding uh, sigma orbitals, I guess I should say, that arise from those sigma interactions. What's really happening here is there's some amount of, uh, of character or mixing between the S orbitals down here and the P orbitals down here that are affecting the energy levels of our S and our, sorry, our sigma and our pi. It's some of our sigma bonding from our P orbitals has a little bit of antibonding character that's arising from the antibonding orbitals coming from our S atomic orbitals combining to a sigma orbital. Um, and so, but for elements like oxygen, fluorine, and neon all the way through there, we'll see that that sigma two pi uh, is lower in energy, sorry, the sigma orbital is lower in energy than the pi orbital. And so this is the structure that we predicted before when we were talking about fluorine. And this is the one where we have uh, whatever whatever we set as our molecular orbital will reflect it as an antibonding orbital above. Um, so our bonding molecular orbital and our antibonding molecular orbital would be the same like relative energy difference from the starting point from one another. Whereas when we're looking earlier in the period on the periodic table, we see there's a little bit of a difference. And I think this is highlighted well, looking at this across the second row. And so when we look across the second row, when we look at the energy of these um, uh, sigma P style orbitals and, and pi orbitals that are coming um, out of our molecular orbital diagrams, we see that this uh, S orbital, where did we go? Right here. So here's our S orbital right here. And here are our pi orbitals that were coming from the combination of our P orbitals, our atomic orbitals. What happens is the energy level for that S orbital is pretty, or sorry, that sigma molecular orbital is very high when we're over in lithium. There's a lot of antibonding character being contributed to that sigma orbital from the lower um, antibonding sigma one. But as we go across the periodic table, this gets lower and lower and lower. And our P orbitals, they get a little bit lower, but they, they, they're not changing quite as much until finally, at oxygen, we see a flip. And so we see that uh, really between nitrogen and oxygen right here is where we see this transition from our sigma orbital being above our pi orbitals to our sigma orbital being below our pi orbitals in our MO diagram. And the trend then continues. Uh, you'll continue to see that uh, sigma orbital get lower and lower in energy. And so what we had described earlier was this fluorine that has this pattern where they're equally kind of distant apart, maybe not equally. Neon might be a better example of that. And so this is something to remember that because of SP mixing, we're going to see a higher energy level sigma than we would expect for those 
combined P atomic orbitals. And so the, the line to remember here again is between nitrogen and oxygen. That's kind of the, the difference between the two. And to the right of that nitrogen oxygen line, it's going to be uh, S or sigma below pi. And to the left of that nitrogen oxygen line, it's going to be the sigma above the pi orbital. So far, we've just been looking at these uh, molecules that have the same atoms. So what happens when we have a heteronuclear diatomic molecule, which means having two different types of elements participating in that bond, right? Where are those sigma and where are those pi orbitals if they're changing across the periodic table? Okay, well, so a few rules about this. Uh, so if we have uh, our, our relative energy, the elements, atomic orbitals are going to be at different energy levels compared to each other. And in general, the more electronegative an uh, atom is, the lower in energy its orbitals are. So let's compare two things that have really different electronegativities, right? Let's say fluorine is really electronegative and carbon is less electronegative. So if we were to look at that, we would say in that case, our fluorine has to be lower in energy um, for its atomic orbital. So our fluorine would be lower in energy and our carbon, which is less electronegative, would be higher in energy when these combine. So now when we combine these and they're at different energy levels, we find that the atomic orbitals that are closest in energy to where the molecular orbital be, will be, will contribute more to that molecular orbital's character. So like, let's take, let's just focus on the carbon and fluorine S orbital. Um, so in this case, if they combine, they're still gonna be lower in energy than the F atomic orbital and a little bit higher in energy than the carbon one. But because the fluorine atomic orbital right here is closer to the energy of the bonding MO and the carbon atomic orbital is closer in energy to the anti-bonding MO, put these here, that the bonding MO will have more fluorine character to it, or the fluorine will contribute more to that molecular orbital. It's electrons will contribute more to that bonding molecular orbital than the carbon one. And the carbon one's really contributing more to the anti-bonding orbital. And so we still split the energy and we're gonna just go a little bit above one and below the other. Um, and it kind of increases that spread in energy in our MO diagram. So in general, if we have an element that is lithium through nitrogen, we're gonna put that sigma 2p below the pi. And anything that's, that's uh, oxygen and fluorine or neon uh, is, or higher is gonna have that sigma below the pi orbital. So lithium through nitrogen, this, the, sorry, the, I might've said this wrong just now. The pi is below the sigma and oxygen and fluorine, that sigma is below the pi. And so when we think about how to do a heteronuclear diatomic molecule with this, we will see which one is closest. Um, so looking at our periodic table, let me just draw this really quick. So I just drew the little uh, second row, oh, part of it for the periodic table here at the bottom. So when I'm trying to decide where to place that pi 2p versus that sigma 2p molecular orbital, if the two atoms that I'm combining are both to the left of this nitrogen oxygen divide, so let's say it's both, uh, we're combining boron and carbon. In this case, I'll make sure that I follow the same rule that nitrogen follows. So I will make sure that my 2p or my pi is below my sigma. And if both of them are on the, the left, or sorry, the right of that divide, let's say I'm combining something like oxygen and fluorine, I would instead see the sigma below the pi. So what happens if we are on either, on, on, we have one from each side, right, for this rule? So in a case where we have, let's say nitrogen and fluorine together, and we're bringing those 
close together. The question is then, well, one of them follows the rule that pi is lower and one of them follows the rule that sigma is lower. So we kind of take the difference. We see what is the element that falls directly in between the two elements in question. And we follow the rule for that one. So for nitrogen and fluorine, they're both one away from oxygen. And so I would have it follow the rule for oxygen, which would mean that the sigma is below the pi. So for N and F bonding, we'll do the same rule that we would for oxygen. Because that oxygen is directly in between the two. If I was looking at neon and carbon, then it would still be oxygen as well because that's the element that falls directly in between them. Okay. But then what happens if it's nitrogen and oxygen that are bonding together, right? Then the difference between those two, they're right next to one another. And they're the kind of benchmarks for whether or not the sigma is lower or the pi orbitals are, old, old, are lower in energy. And so in this case, when we look at it, the way we kind of solve it, and I've got the, the picture here with the electron density, um, and I've built the MO diagram for you and shown it. When we bring oxygen and nitrogen together, now our oxygen is more electronegative, right? So it's slightly lower in energy relative to the nitrogen's atomic orbitals. So when we start combining these, we see that the bonding orbital in our, from our S atomic orbitals is gonna have more oxygen character because it's lower in energy, because it's more electronegative. Whereas the antibonding orbital has more nitrogen character because again, it's going, that nitrogen's higher in energy. So it'll contribute more to the higher energy orbital that's being created when these overlap or when we, they constructively and destructively interfere. So then now we apply that up to the P level atomic orbitals that are being combined. And we see that because oxygen is going to contribute more to that bonding character of the MO, um, just because it's lower in energy and more electronegative, that means that it'll follow oxygen's rule. And so that sigma will end up being lower than the pi because oxygen is contributing more to the MO diagram's bonding orbitals and nitrogen is contributing more to the antibonding orbital character. So it's gonna follow the rule for oxygen. And so in that case, we see for NO, it follows the pattern that oxygen has. For sigma and pi orbitals. And so that sigma orbital will be lower than the pi for NO.